Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Let's Talk ABM with me, Declan Mulkeen, CMO of account-based marketing agency, Strategic ABM. ABM is one of the hottest B2B strategies right now, helping companies to win, grow and retain their most important accounts. This podcast allows me to spend some time talking to account-based marketing leaders about their ABM programs and share their insights with other B2B marketers, wherever you are on your ABM journey. Today I'm joined by Lindsay Baggett, who's the Senior ABM Manager at Tanium. Lindsay, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, I mean, we've been chasing each other back and forth. We, we had a kind of an early conversation a while ago, and I think you, you hadn't been an awful long time in the job there at Tanium. And, um, and obviously, you know, life and, and work and everything can, has meant that we've taken a little bit longer to, to record this session. So it'll be interesting to see how things have moved on in that time since we last spoke. But what, when we were speaking, one thing that you said to me, which I absolutely loved, which is why I want to kind of, you know, start with this question. You said to me, um, there's a huge difference between ABM and RAM. So for the audience, what do you mean by RAM? And tell me what that difference is. Yeah, so RAM stands for Random Acts of Marketing. And I think a lot of times when um, a company or an individual is you know, just starting their journey in ABM, um, that the idea, like the romanticized idea of ABM, a lot of times like the flash and bang of really cool campaigns, whether it's direct mail or, you know, advertising or things like that. And um, in their random acts of marketing, they don't fit into a well thought out, you know, full strategy and, 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 you know, full funnel strategy for that matter, which I think is like true ABM is like, how do we stay close to these accounts, stay married to these accounts? I'm, um, I like to say like we ride or die with these accounts, right? This is a long-term commitment and every step of the way needs to be thought out and it needs to be, you know, whether it's programmatic, um, strategic and everything should be orchestrated and it's not just random acts of marketing. And I think, um, when ABM becomes random acts of marketing, it's really just kind of like glorified lead generation or glorified demand generation versus true account-based marketing. Well, I think it's very helpful. I think that I love the expression, we ride or die with the, with these accounts. And I think that's, I could, I could, I could, I could see that going on, on, on t-shirts at the next convention, ABM convention. So I, I love that. So just, just, we mentioned about your, your senior, senior um, ABM manager at Tanium. Um, just for the audience, cause it's not necessarily a brand that everyone will know. Tell us what, what, what is Tanium? Who are you? What do you do? And you kind of, you know, imagine you explain to my, to my five-year-old, how would you explain to him uh, what you do? Sure. So Tanium is a Converge Endpoint Management Platform, and it's really foundational software for any IT operations or cybersecurity team um, in any size enterprise. But we certainly have high penetration in like Fortune 500 large enterprise companies. And uh, what Tanium does is allows IT operations or security to be able to see everything and do anything in their entire IT estate. So it keeps companies protected. Um, and it allows IT operation um, practitioners and cybersecurity practitioners to um, be able to see into all of the endpoints of, a, of an enterprise and also be able to, to do anything within those endpoints to make sure that they're compliant, they're up to date, um, that they're not wasting money on, you know, unused licenses. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just a very powerful foundational um, software that, that, you know, allows you to, to do a lot of things that people, that a lot of companies um, probably still think is not possible to solve for. And so Tanium does that. Well, I love that, that last bit there, that kind of, a lot of companies aren't aware that they can solve some of these problems and then you're there to, to, to solve them for them. And obviously hence, you know, why account based marketing is so important to get that message out there. Right. But I think um, if I'm right in saying you've been at Tanium for, Coming up to two years now, I think yeah, is, is is the timeline. Let's just talk a little bit about the kind of last twenty four months or so, because um, obviously you were a senior ABM practitioner. You've been working for a number of other you know technology companies before you joined Tanium. You were brought into Tanium, I believe, 
to head up the kind of the ABM yeah. um, strategy there and to kind of give direction to that strategy. So let, let's talk a little bit about that. I think the first thing I'd like to ask you, um, I've got kind of a few questions in my head about this, but the first one is, um, I think you were, you were kind of granted relatively, which is great for anybody, relatively, relatively free reign um, to build that ABM strategy. What, what, did you, what did you come across when you joined the company? What were you thinking? And what did you kind of decide to do? If you could perhaps kind of share that with us. Yeah, so I was brought in to build um, a ABM program from the ground up, you know, completely from scratch. It didn't exist before. Um, and so I sit under the demand generation team and I'm, um, and so what I, my goal, I would say in the first month was to really do a very comprehensive listening tour, talking to the marketing team to see what, what already exists today, you know, or at the time, like when I started, um, what programs are already in place? How do we market to our audience, you know, to our prospects and to our customers? What resonates? Uh, what's working? What's not working? But then I spent most of my time speaking with sales leadership. Um, you know, our at the time our SVP of um, North America Sales, our the AVPs, the RVPs, and um, and also the account executives to really understand, you know, how do they sell? And, and what do they need ABM to solve for? So, you know, we can kind of go in thinking like, oh, we're just going to create a program that's going to market it and close, you know, prospect accounts, but that might not be what the company as a whole needs. And so how I, what I was searching for is um, ultimately how does Tanium as a company grow? And, um, and how does sales win and how can I help them win and where do they need me to help them win? Like what, what, what's the, where can I make the most impact and where am I most needed? And so from that listening tour, um, Tanium grows by obviously net new logos, especially in the inter large enterprise space, you know, what we call majors or strategic accounts. And then also by customer expansion, which, which isn't uncommon. But, um, and that was where they needed ABM to do the most work and to have the most impact. You know, I, there's other areas of ABM that we, it could have gone down where it might be preventing churn or, you know, changing hearts and minds. And so um, while like, the, you know, there is some aspect of that, that for Tanium, that wasn't the most pressing area of need. And so I wanted to make sure that the ABM strategy aligned to how Tanium grows and what Tanium needed, um, needed most. And um, and the other thing as well is how does that, how can I leverage the existing marketing strategy, structure, programs, teams, um, so that I wasn't duplicating efforts, stepping on any toes, but really making sure that everything that I was doing is a value add. I mean, there's so, uh, there's, I've just made so many notes. There's so many things you said here that I haven't heard before, which is, I absolutely loved it. And I think just in terms of this, um, the way you called it a listening tour, um, as you started your journey there and the way to kind of build that kind of like consensus and support and, you know, what do they, what does Tanium need ABM to solve for? How does Tanium grow? Um, how does sales win? How can I help them win? I think those kind of questions are, are very simple questions, right. but they're probably not questions. They're probably not questions that get asked necessarily in a, in a, in a formal process. And I think, you know, anybody listening to this episode should, should take note really, because I think that's, that's definitely a, a very, very smart way to go about things. Um, one of the things you, you also tell me though, as well, I think when we were speaking before, and I think it's probably linked to this listening tour, but I think you were talking about, how it was very important to define what ABM meant for the company, mm -hmm. right? In terms of what, what does account-based marketing, you know, there's lots of misconceptions, lots of myths. Everyone's got a different opinion about what ABM is or what ABM isn't. Did you, did you come up with a definition together, like a consensus on what, on what, it, what it meant as part of this, this conversation? Um, I wouldn't say together. What I did like in the listening tour, 
you know, as I, as I was asking these questions, and then of course, I'm also getting asked like, well, what exactly is ABM? Like, what does it stand for? What does it mean? Um, there was a lot of questions, especially from, from sales. And, um, and so I wanted to be very clear from the very beginning before even launching a program and defining the program. Um, I think it was like, even before saying like, this is what ABM is or will be here. It was like, this is, I wanted to be very clear on what ABM is not and will not be here. And just to be very clear to set expectations. Um, I feel like expectations can be like the fruit of all frustration, right? But so I was very clear to, to say like what ABM is not. And so I, I, there's a slide that I created and I can't remember all of the, you know, it was like two columns and it was like all the analogies, like this is what it isn't and this is what it is. And so one of us like, you know, it's, it's not about MQLs. It's not, um, you know, a light switch. It's not something that we turn on and off and, you know, can do so very quickly. It's not, um, you know, like flash and bang. It's a very slow burn. It's not about, um, a touchdown, it's first downs, which I, for your audience, this American football terms, <laughs> I don't know what, what the equivalent would be maybe in, in your football, American soccer, but for American football, um, you know, the celebration and, and everything is very much around the touchdowns. And those are like the flashbang moments. But I, you know, I just, this is the analogy I come back to time and time again, is if we think about an account and um, and an account executive and like what they need to accomplish throughout the entire buyer journey before getting a closed one. And then also moving on to expansion is like, there's, there are probably hundreds, if not thousands of moments. And in American football would be like plays, like, how do you win a game? It's play after play after play. And the goal isn't a touchdown. It's really just like, it's to get the first down. And so you have a team of people, especially now with like these large deals, it's very much about team selling and ABM is one member of that team. And so what are all of the first downs? How can ABM help be, you know, an offensive or defensive coach and help you kind of orchestrate those plays or define those plays? And when does ABM actually need to be part, you know, uh, of those plays? So setting those expectations, I, I'm trying to think of all the other analogies I've used, but when it came to defining ABM um, for Tatum in the early days, I feel like I, fo I focused a lot on what it wasn't because I feel like there were a lot of preconceived notions of ABM were not accurate. And so I felt like a, there was some unlearning to do and then really being able to define like ABM. And I would say that the definition that um, I kind of settled on was, you know, ABM is a service. And so I kind of defined the program as ABM as a service. And, um, yeah, I, I would almost call it like, instead of, I, like sometimes I, I have a, I have issue with my own title or the, is account-based marketing. I just like, that's so inaccurate. It's not account, you know, it's not account-based sales, it's not account-based marketing. Um, it's almost like account-based like service is really think, how I think about what I provide to Tanium and to, to the sales organization. And so like, what does that, what does that mean? It means that ABM is here. Yes, there's a framework and there's a strategy, but it's really about keeping the account at the center, the customer, the prospect at the center and making it as easy for them to learn about Tanium and what Tanium can do for them. And, you know, why do they need to change? Why now? And why Tanium? And so like, what? how do we educate our accounts um, as easily as possible in the way that they need it and at the moment they need it uh, and to progress deals. And so the, like all of those moments, it's very tactical and it's all very personal. And so every, every moment, every play, every tactic is keeping the account at the center. So that's why it's, it's not, you know, marketing. It's not always sales. It's a lot of enablement, but it's really just a service. Like what does that account need in this moment? And it's going to be so unique. You know, some of the, some of the programs may be similar, but exactly what we do in that pro with that program for that account is very, very unique. So I don't know if that, if I landed my plane there, but I think a, like account-based service, I think is almost a, a more accurate depiction of what account-based marketing really provides an organization. 
so I'm just trying to think how to pronounce that. So is that is that A B M S or? A, 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 <laughs> I'm trying to think how you actually pull that together. A, but... A, B, S. <laughs> or or A-B-S. A-B-M-A-S or Abmas or something like that. But yeah, you, I think it's, it's, I mean, it's so refreshing hearing this from you, actually, because I think, yeah, ABM as a service, because you are, but yeah, it is a service into the organization, as you said, and it's not just marketing, it's not just sales, et cetera. And I think, thank you for helping with the, um, the American football terms um, and touchdowns and all that. I mean, most of most people have seen plenty of American films over the years. Um, you'd be surprised to hear that American football is actually quite popular even outside of the United States. Um, and uh, but it, it is it's just really interesting what you were just saying there in terms of the um, the plays. So as you said, it's you know a, a, an American football game is made up of a number of plays that end up in the. And it's very kind of, as you said, very kind of strategy based and it's like very kind of orchestrated. So I think it's very really interesting what you said there. But um, another thing you, you, when we were chatting before, I think you said to me, which kind of, you know, kind of stuck in my mind. But you said to me that it's all about progress rather than perfection, I think you said. So how, how, how looking now, almost two years now since you've been running ABM there, is that still the case? Progress rather than perfection? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, I feel like it's a mantra for my for everything, um, especially for me because I'm a big picture person, and and so I like I like to have these things mapped out in my head, and I have like these very ideal, like these very strong and big ideals, and so my my aspiration is perfection, but I I have to I have to kind of rein rein that tendency in, um, especially with something like account-based marketing, where it's so complex, truly, right? It's, it's, it's a, you know, we, we have a CMO for an entire organization to run marketing, as you're familiar. And I think, you know, account-based marketing is like, you're, you're a CMO for that account. And, um, you know, a CMO that should have a very strong responsibility, sense of responsibility to revenue for that account. And so with that, I, I hate to say complex because I know it has such, such a negative connotation, but with the wide variety of tactics and programs and campaigns that you'll run for an account, it's very difficult, I think, to get account executives that are new to account-based marketing to really be able to wrap their heads around it. And so... Um, you know, progress, not perfection comes in, not just like your programming and your strategy, but also in how you're communicating that to your sales team and also driving the adoption of those of, you know, of your programming with each of those account executives. Um, we call them DSAs here at, at Tanium. And so I think in, in every aspect of account-based marketing is like, okay, what, like, what are the stepping stones to that perfection? and not waiting to be perfect before launching and trying to execute. Um, and then, and then how, how do you, how do you communicate those stepping stones and drive the adoption of each of those stepping stones with sales? Yeah, I think it's, you made some very valid points there around um, not being too obsessed about getting everything 100% right. And um, it recalls a conversation I had with um, Rhiannon Blackwell at, Price for Tess Cooper's PwC that she said, you know, you you you, you got to start with your best hypothesis. You got to start mm-hmm. with your best plan, but you just don't know what's going to happen. So you've got to be able to be, you know, agile. And therefore, if you do that perfection at the beginning, you, the perfection probably won't be good enough because it will end up the, the circumstances will change, right. and those circumstances will will require you to change. And therefore, it's almost better to, to launch, as you said. And then to see how the market, how the accounts respond, and then you can then you know progress, make that progress as you said. But just a question for you, um, Lindsay, with regards to the work you're doing there, specifically the ABM program, could you for, to help the audience give them a, a kind of a brief, you know, a picture? Could you paint a picture of the ABM that you're doing there, the program? Are you doing one to one, one to many, one to few? Are you doing a blend? Just kind of paint a little a picture if you could. Sure. So um, definitely a blend of one to many, one to few, and one to one. And I think of um, to kind of 
creative visuals, I, uh, the ABM program is kind of like a pyramid. So we have like our foundational layers are one to many. And, um, you know, going back to listening tours, you know, how do we, how are we going to segment, select our ABM target accounts? Like, what are we going to say? How do we say something unique and relevant to our segment of, of accounts? And so uh, we chose uh, a vertical centric approach for our one to many. So we've chosen two verticals in our, uh, for our strategic accounts specifically. And so the foundational layer is vertical centric one to many messaging. You know, what is the unique value of Tanium for financial services as, as one vertical? And like, what is the unique value, um, you know, and benefit for Tanium um, with our high tech or big tech um, vertical? And then as we know more, learn more, get more insights or as deal or as accounts progress from there, whether it's, you know, in our like, prospecting, um, you know, stage one, stage two, opportunities start to open and we learn more, we gather more intel. Then we move into one to few more sophisticated um, or more personalized. Um, we try to be as, as we learn more, we try to be more relevant. We try to use that and evolve the messaging that we're serving those accounts. And then for specific accounts where we have line of sight to closing um, or, you know, just a very strong uh, value proposition and, and, and uh, what we call like middle of funnel, bottom of funnel accounts, then we might move into, depending on the size of the deal um, and our line of sight into a closed one, uh, moving into one-to-one -to, -one to really, uh, and the focus of one-to-one -one is to de-risk deals make um and also to give our you know our best shot at a closed one our lot you know expanding opportunity size as much as possible and trying to accelerate pipeline to have it close um not you know on time but but trying to shorten sales cycles as well so it's kind of like a very high level overview <laughs> but it's like if we if we so like the foundational layers vertical centric one to many and then as as we learn more about accounts, then our, our one to few and our one to one is more insight and intel um, based. So we'll, we'll kind of evolve evolve from there. And just out of curiosity then, how do you see that evolving now, got, let's say looking forward next 12 months, do you think that's gonna stay the same? Or do you think, do you know what, with our one to few, one to one to one, it's working so well, we're gonna push a bit more, push, push a bit more that way. How, how do you see things going? So I, th I think that the peer the structure of the pyramid will stay the same. And, you know, we talked about um, how I view ABM as like ABM as a service. And so like, what does that mean? Like I have a full menu of programs and tactics that we can deploy for top of funnel accounts, as well as middle of funnel accounts and bottom of funnel accounts. Um, and, you know, those plays are things that we can use to get the next first down, right? So when I look at the next, you know, 12 months ahead, my focus, you know, I would say we're about a year and a half into our full launch of the ABM program here at Tanium. And so when I look forward, we have the foundational layers um, working, running, you know, content strategy, how we're educating. And so now my focus for the next 12 months is really driving adoption of the very tactical um, plays of ABM as a service or our menu of plays to, uh, to accelerate and deal. So like more of the, the one-to-one the -one tactics, I should say, is like what I'm really trying to focus on and drive. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, another thing that you said to me when we were chatting previously was you talked about the, um, the strength, I think it was, of the subject matter experts there at Tanium. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the kind of conversations I have with ABMers around um, how they go to market and particularly how they talk to their customers and their kind of key prospects is the use of SMEs, subject matter experts, um, kind of kind of the peer to peer approach. Um, could you share how you, how do you leverage your your subject matter experts there in terms of your ABM program? Sure. So I use them for all, all kinds of things. Um, in the early days, it was really to help shape our narrative, our value proposition and, and our messaging strategy for the verticals. So we have different subject matter experts that have, you know, vertical expertise as well as, you know, persona, like their former CISOs, former CIOs, director of ITs. Um, 
And so using them for content to really help inform us on how do we create valuable educational content, thought leadership content. Um, and then I also use them um, in, in our, like our full funnel, you know, menu of, of plays. So you know, I bring them in for executive sponsorship uh, opportunities for peer to peer, you know, one to one peer to peer educational opportunities, you know, ways to provide value to prospects or customers really um, to accomplish a lot of different things. A couple examples might be to really help, um, you know, the CIO or the CISO of a prospect account really understand the business value of Tanium versus like the practical, technical value of Tanium. It's like they're, you know, their form, our subject matter experts are former CIOs, CISOs. And so it's for them to come in and have that peer-to-peer -peer conversation and really help make sure that the elevated value, business value of Tanium is landing with our prospect CIOs and CISOs. And um, as well as like in a very form, like whether that's a one-off, right? A one-to-one -one kind of peer-to-peer -peer conversation, or if it's bringing them in for a formal partnership, you know, what I call executive sponsorship um, program. So we're committing um, these subject matter experts to the account over the long term. And we try to bring them in, in, you know, the middle of funnel um, opportunity stages and, and, and through to close one and, and into expansion. So we're making sure that our subject matter experts are aligned to the success of an account um, and when I say success, success account, the, the actual account teams, IT operations, cybersecurity, those teams that are buying Tanium, helping them um, be aligned and make sure that they're successful. So those are, those are a couple of ways that we use them. But then I would say also one of the most valuable ways that I personally use them um, is the feedback loop. So as they're having these conversations, what's landing? What, what is really you know, impactful to our audience, to our prospects? And um, how are they talking about things? How are things evolving? Are, are the concerns, strategic initiatives, you know, are, you know, are things shifting? And so it's a way like these, these are, you know, they're on the front line and they're having different conversations with key decision makers and leaders within our target accounts. And so I, it's, it's amazing to have that feedback loop um, from it's a little bit unique perspective from from an account executive. So using that to learn how do we win? How do we do, you know, are there new ways for us, um, blind spots, objections, um, value propositions, you know, anything that can help inform us to, you know, reverse engineer a closed one or a really solid, impactful conversation that guarantees us a follow up. Um, you know, in any of those things. So it's just, it's highly educational and, and it informs my entire program as well as how I help in my enablement with the DSAs as well. And out of curiosity, um, do you get any pushback from these guys, from these subject matter experts? They say, oh, I'm terribly busy, <laughs> couldn't possibly, or, or are they absolutely delighted to be part of that kind of whole no, process? Our, I mean, our subject matter experts, shout out to Eric Gaston, Tim Morris, I'm always on their calendar and they are so generous. Um, they're, they're saints. They, uh, they're so generous with their time and, and they're happy to help. You know, like they, they want to help sales win. They want to help Tanium win. Um, and we're aligned because a lot of what they're doing and trying to accomplish is very much aligned with also what I'm trying to, to do and accomplish within the accounts, but also with our, our sales team. And so um, they're very generous. So I, not yet. Oh, knock on wood. I hope, I hope they never give me any pushback with, uh, with their time. Well, it may, I mean, if you get more and more successful, because obviously you're running a great program there and obviously you will probably end up, well, you're, well we'll see. You'll, I'm sure you'll have it all figured and you'll, you'll work out what to do. Um, question actually about, you talked about subject matter experts, but that's one group that you're leaning on very heavily, but also you're leaning very heavily on sales, mm -hmm. clearly. Um, as we know, ABM isn't ABM without your sales colleagues helping yeah. you to be successful. Um, could you give a couple of tips to the audience on how you've achieved um, that kind of alignment with your, your colleagues um, in sales? Sure. So I, I'm going to say uh, 
some of the things that you probably hear on every episode of Let's Talk ABM. Um, and that's, you know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, earning their trust and, and getting, trying to, to get a few wins under your belt to have like the social proof, you know, I, 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 there hasn't been a sales organization that I've ever worked with that didn't find a lot of power in the anecdotal success stories. So I think that's huge. Um, whether you're like within the current organization or, or from past organizations, bringing that, that knowledge and expertise and trying to build trust with the sales org with your expertise that you know how to help them win. And, um, and I think the other thing is how you show up is important. You know, are you helping them work more efficiently? Are you helping, um, you know, you're not wasting their time. Hopefully every time that you're showing up to a meeting, you're providing value and it's an efficient use of their time. And then, um, I think the most important part is to be curious. And what do I mean by that is staying curious with them, you know, asking, you know, questions about their account, questions about um, their meetings, like what they're going through. But also more importantly is as you have these meetings across multiple um, teams, account executives, you know, our subject matter experts, I think bringing able, being able to be curious, make observations and and have hypotheses right of like this is what i'm seeing we're there's a there's for example like maybe there's a theme of hey we're not getting the follow-up because hey uh we've lost these deals these opportunities have all closed failed because and um or hey this is where i've seen you know this messaging or this value proposition is really is really landing very well have you tried to leverage this or, hey, how, um, who do we know in this account? Where are you struggling? H have you tried building out your, I call them hit lists. You know, it's a list of prospects for an account. Have you tried going into LinkedIn Sales Navigator? Have you, have you used these tools in this way to identify these people? Just getting curious of, and finding ways to provide value. And it's, it's in the little things, it's in the big things. But I think that when you're curious and you're asking them, and then you can be a creative problem solver of, hey, like they, maybe there's a roadblock, maybe there's an objective. And, and um, as an account-based manager, you're exposed to so many conversations across these accounts. How do you help distribute that information in a valuable way? And how do you enable the sales team to just work more effectively? So um, I think that curiosity uh, if you're asking those questions and you're, and you can extract, you know, like the, the nuggets of knowledge, the anecdotes, um, the themes, and then have great ways to solve for those problems and then help the DSA solve for those problems or de-risk their deals or help them get multi-threaded, just be more effective and, and have more success in all of the moments of their, of, a, you know, in their prospecting and in their pursuit it's a very long-winded answer, but I find that that's been the best way to to build rapport and build trust, and to actually get the account executives to adopt, you know, more of your tactical plays, especially in the one-to-one -one fashion. Really having them bring you into into the account. Well, I think there's so much to unpick there, and I think the couple of things that I loved was um, you mentioned about social proof. You mentioned about um, having a couple of wins under your belt. You mentioned the, the power of anecdotes, and I hear that a, a lot, that sharing those anecdotes of, hey, this is what we did, this is what happened, this is the result. Sometimes the story is more compelling than even kind of sharing numbers. Yes. Um, so telling that story, and people love a good story, and, and, and you know, us marketers, we're meant to be good storytellers, or we should be good storytellers. Right. So I think those kind of, what I kind of call war stories, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, uh, what happened and, you know, um, how did it come about and what was the end result and what did they say? Those are really compelling stories. And I think also the thing that you finished on there about being curious, I think that is that is so important. And I think that that um, 
the showing value and and also as you said the little things it's very often not the large initiatives but it's the little things that show that you care and show that you're actually helping them and uh, as i always say you know sometimes i used to be a head of sales as well and you know people would always say oh god marketing not another bloody marketing presentation or something yeah. so you know whenever they hear the word marketing they normally kind of shut down and shut off and you know so you have to kind of talk to them on their level and i think what you just said is a, is a great a great way of doing that talking of the great things that you've said uh lindsay one thing that you said that i wrote down um from our chat prior to to this recording was you said um and i've never heard this expression before you said know your forest before you focus on the trees yes tell me a little bit because you've got you've got some wonderful wonderful expressions but tell me a little bit about that expression and and, and what's the context of that yeah, I think, um, you know, like I said before, I'm, I'm kind of like a, a big picture thinker, right? And and so for me, I think maybe that's just a way that I need to process information. Like I need to see the whole forest, like show me the big picture. What are we trying to accomplish here? And, you know, whether that's like with an account or with, you know, ABM as a whole or how Tanium wins as a whole, how what Tanium needs to, to do to you know, to grow to, or, you know, to win, to expand. Um, and so the forest for me is really understanding the landscape of, uh, you know, in this, in this context of, of ABM. So it's like, what is the landscape of, what are we offering? You know, what are the true pillars? What is the, what is the higher, you know, high level value proposition, the pillars, um, of, of Tanium and, and really understanding that, but then how do we win? What exactly, like, why do people buy? Why, why do people take a meeting? Why do people take the first meeting? And why do they, why do they give you a follow-up meeting? How are, you know, like what, what, what are all of these things? And, and, and so for me, it's like, all, like, you know, I get very curious about this and then it's like, I need to like map out my whole forest versus you know, the trees of the force might be like, oh, a direct mail campaign or a lead generation campaign or, oh, this digital advertising. And, and all of these little details don't matter, right? Every little tree doesn't matter unless you really understand the landscape of your entire forest. Because I think if you understand the landscape of the whole forest, then you know, you know, which trees to chop down. <laughs> I'm not sure how to continue this analogy, but but then it's like, then you know which, like, which, which path to take to, you know, to win. And so I think um, if, if you're creating a campaign that's completely detached from why people take a meeting, how successful will that campaign be, right? So I, I feel like the, the forest is really how, how you navigate, um, you know, the maze of the trees and knowing which, where to spend your time and where to spend your money and, um, and your effort, so. Well, I think, I mean, I love that. It goes back to what you said at the beginning and, and, and I'm, I, you know, the things about what do they need ABN to solve? How, how does Tinium grow? How does sales win? Um, how can I help them win? And I think, that, as you said, knowing that kind of bigger picture first before getting into the kind of the nitty gritty and the details and uh, the minutia of everything, I suppose, is, um, yeah. is, is really important. Say... So. Sorry, just, just to continue on with that, I think um, ABM a lot of times can be a fairly like anemic team. Uh, you know, we're trying to do, especially considering all the things that you have to do, because, you know, ABM as a service is really facilitating uh, an account executive to do all of the right things for an account to give them their best shot at closing a deal. Right. And so we have to be efficient. And so it's easy to go down the path of more is more, you know, the flash and the bang and, you know, can't like campaign or, you know, play to play to play and, and none of it really fits into the bigger picture. And so I, that's why I think it's really important to like, what is your North star? And ultimately I think the North star of an ABM program is how do you, how do we win? How do we replicate wins? How do we make wins more efficient? Um, 
And, you know, like, in, and then I think from there, there's a few pillars of, of what goes into that. But I, I think, especially knowing the nature of a lot of ABM managers, where um, it's a lot of work, it's a very heavy lift. It's a heavy lift for the ABM manager. It's a heavy lift for sales. It's a heavy lift for the cross-functional teams that support. And so um, let's not let's not waste our time on things that don't fit, that don't, you know, that really ultimately don't make sense if we're thinking truly strategically and smarter about what we're trying to accomplish. Great, great points, Lindsay. I think I love the, I talk, I talk a lot of myself about North Star as well and making sure that every ABM program is a very clear North Star that is clear to the business as well. And I think you've, um, you've hit the nail on the head. Let's, um, let's finish off with some rapid fire questions uh, okay. for you. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the show, you, you've been around doing ABM for some, some time now. So you're, um, you're, um, You've been there, you've done it, you know, you've got the t-shirt, you've got dirt under your nails, as I kind of say that you've been there and had all the experiences. So what would you say is your greatest ABM learning? What have you learned on this journey that you've been on? I think, um, I don't know, there's so many, which, which, which do I choose? I think, um, asking for help is maybe something that I personally struggle with. And so asking for help earlier, um, and, and it's just so ironic because I love helping others. I love helping others win. That's why I do what I do. And, and others are eager to help you win as well. And so I think don't, don't be scared to ask for help and to collaborate. Um, and, and, and so I, th I think that's, that's probably, and, and that help, whether it's, you know, going to you know, sales leadership and saying, Hey, I like, this is, I'm struggling with this, or I'm, I'm seeing, you know, this is a bit of a bottleneck, you know, how can I, how can I serve your team better to maybe, maybe I need to, to eliminate this bottleneck or, um, this point of friction or, uh, you know, cross-functional teams, uh, you know, maybe there's, um, synergies to really kind of help you accomplish, more um without it all being on your shoulders so i would say I ask for help very 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 good advice there and in terms of um what would you say is, uh, is the hardest part that you found of doing abm i think the hardest part is is driving adoption of all of all of the services that abm has to offer that's been that's and I think that's, you know, whether it's um, in my entire history from field marketing to ABM, I would say that that's always the hardest is how do you drive ABM um, adoption, like true ABM adoption. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree on that one. And um, go back to the top of the show when you talked about ABM versus random acts of marketing. What would you say is the greatest misconception that you found out there about ABM when you tell people that you do ABM or you talk to other colleagues about account based marketing? Um, that it, that people think random acts of marketing is ABM. I, I, feel, I feel like a little bit of an ABM snob um, because, you know, I feel like the ABM can be as much of a philosophy and every company that adopts ABM is a little bit different philosophy and approach. I think a huge misconception it, that is, unfortunately, I think it's kind of proliferated in a lot of the ABM conferences is that it's really glorified lead generation. My snob's coming out now, Declan, I'm sorry. But it's, um, you know, that we we put together, you know, really cool direct mail campaign. And that like, you know, that's a presentation in an ABM conference of an ABM strategy. And I, 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 would, I would hesitate to even call that a campaign. That might be a play. Is it ABM or not? I would, you know, I feel like there could be a podcast of ABM or RAM, you know, and it's like people <laughs> can phone in and say, hey, I have this this idea for a campaign. And, um, you know, is this true ABM or is it random acts of marketing? Right. And so it's like ABM or not. And so um, it's like I, I think that we have to challenge our organizations need to challenge themselves when, if they're truly going to adopt or deploy ABM is to elevate it beyond lead generation, elevate it beyond random acts of marketing. Last question. I'll, I'll touch on it at the end, but last question for you, just it might tie into what you're going to say now, but um, what would you say has been your, um, 
or right, let me put let me put this another way. Let's imagine that um, a colleague calls you and says, "Hey, Lindsay, I, I, you won't believe this, but I've just I've been asked to present uh, an ABM strategy to the C-suite, to the CEO, or whatever." And they say to you, "What on earth should I definitely make sure that I include? What on earth should I definitely make sure that I say?" What would be that one thing you say to them? Make sure you say dot dot dot. I would say make sure that you know and can express how your organization wins and how your program is completely aligned to how to get sales to win. I think that's a very simple answer, very succinct <laughs> I, answer. Mean, I, could, I could obviously, um, you know, like go into more detail, but I think, you know, if someone's calling me very quickly, it's like, if you don't know how you win, you don't have a program. Or, or you're not ready. So, um, and so certainly if you're going in front of the C-suite, you know, uh, hopefully they know how, how the organization wins. Um, but I, I, I think that's, that's the crux of an ABM program. You don't have that. You don't have a program. I love that. I think that's a, a wonderful way to, to end this, uh, this episode. Lindsay, thank you so much for, um, for sharing your ABM journey with us today. And I wish you and the team there at at Tanium every success for the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been fun. If you enjoyed this episode of Let's Talk ABM, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted. Feel free to rate and review this podcast. Thanks so much for listening.